Hi, and welcome back. This video is part of the free Blazor Crash Course. In this crash course, we built an actual Blazor WebAssembly application based on .NET 5. In this video, we will learn about CSS handling for Blazor applications. We will discuss the difference between local and global CSS definitions and how CSS isolation makes the developer's life easier. Hi, I'm a software engineer with more than 10 years of experience with the .NET platform. In this crash course, we focus on Blazor web app development. This time, we won't implement new components for our finance mentor application, but we will make the existing components look better. Let's start by looking at how CSS works in Blazor. First of all, it's important to understand that Blazor uses standard CSS like every other web framework. Blazor also supports every CSS property that is supported by the browser. If you followed along as we built the Finance Mentor application, you saw that we already used a lot of CSS in our project. We used Bootstrap to style our earnings page and implement our model dialog component in previous videos. Let's open the nav menu component and take a closer look at how we use CSS to make the menu look great. On the first line, for example, we use the top row class, as well as a few navbar specific classes and padding left of four units. All those classes are defined in Bootstrap. But how does it all work behind the scenes? If I do a global search for the .navbar clause, we get a result in the bootstrap.min.css file. Let's open the file. This file is part of the www root folder. The content of the www root folder gets exported as it is when we build the application. Every file in this folder will be available for the browser when the application runs on a server. Let's rebuild the application and open Windows Explorer. As you can see, we have a www root folder in the client project folder. When I open it, we can see the CSS folders we also saw in the solution explorer. In the CSS folder, I open the bootstrap folder. As you can see, there is the bootstrap.min.css file we opened in Visual Studio before. Now we know that the .navbar class is defined in the bootstrap.min.css file and we know that the www root folder contains the file. But how does the application load the file? Let's open the index.html file, which is also stored in the www root folder. If you are familiar with other web development frameworks like React or Angular, this index.html definition should not surprise you. We have a head section that defines the viewport of the application, sets the base path, and most importantly, defines a link statement to load every individual CSS file we use in the Blazor application. Let's go through those definitions one by one. The first definition includes the minified bootstrap CSS. We already talked about it before. The second definition includes a global style sheet for our application. We haven't talked about it yet. Let's change that and open the file. As you can see, we have a few global definitions like the font family or the link color. Let's go back to the index.html file. The third definition is different. We have an href definition that does not match a physical file in the www root folder. This is a Blazor specific feature that allows us to use CSS isolation. Let's learn about CSS isolation in Blazor. The statement you can see includes a file that gets generated during the build process. Let's take a look at the file that gets generated when we build the Blazor application. We open the Windows Explorer at the following path. And there you can see the financementor.client.styles.css file. Let's open the file. As you can see, every CSS selector contains a generated part at the end. The generated ID is the same for every CSS definition that belongs to the same Blazor component. In the comment on the first line, you can see that the statements below belong to the main layout component in the shared folder. If we scroll down, we can see another comment before the CSS definitions of the nav menu component follow. 
The main benefit of using CSS isolation is that we can use short and descriptive names for our CSS classes and don't have to be afraid of any name clashes across our application or any external CSS definitions like Bootstrap. Now that we know how a dynamically generated Blazor CSS file looks like and how it is referenced in the index.html file, let's talk about how we can use CSS isolation for our components. First, let's take a look at the nav menu component. If we look at the component in the Solution Explorer, we can expand the item and find a nav menu.razor.css file. If we name a CSS file the same as the component and end it with a .razor.css, we enable the CSS isolation feature using the naming convention. As you can see, there is no unique ID part of the selector definitions in this file. We can have short and descriptive names and use them in the component. Blazor generates the IDs and puts all component definitions into a single file during build time. We talked a lot about CSS. Let's open the main layout.raise.css file and change our sidebar colors to reflect the seriousness of our finance mentor application better. In the sidebar selection definition, let's change the linear gradient. Now let's build and start the application. As you can see, the sidebar now has different colors. Let's open the developer console and navigate to the network tab. Select CSS to filter the request to show only CSS files. Now press Ctrl F5 to reload the page without caching. Now let's click on the financementor.client.styles.css file. And there you can see the CSS definition we just changed. We can also customize the identifier format in the project file. However, in most projects, the default identifiers will be good enough. If you are an experienced web developer, you might have to question if Blazor supports LESS or SAS as a CSS preprocessor. The answer is yes and no. Blazor doesn't support it, but it can handle it if the preprocessing happens before Blazor executes CSS isolation. You could use a before build task in Visual Studio, or you could use third party packages such as Delegate.sas Builder. However, CSS preprocessing is an advanced topic we will not explore within this Blazor crash course. We talked a lot about CSS isolation and local CSS definitions beside our components. It can be helpful to have all the required definitions close to the component in separated files. However, if you want to share styles across components, you can define them in the app CSS file or in a custom CSS file that you include in the www root folder and reference in the index.html file. The important thing to keep in mind is that CSS isolation only applies to local CSS definitions defined in files named similarly to its component files. Global CSS files are neither bundled nor altered with a unique identifier. After we learned so much about handling CSS, let's improve our application's appearance. Let's start by setting the height of the app navbar in the main layout component. We use CSS isolation. In the CSS file, we change the height definition of the top row class to 80 pixels. Next, we want to remove all the code from the project template that we don't need in the Finance Mentor application. In the Solution Explorer, we remove the counter component and the fetch data component. Next, we open the nav menu component and remove the links to the removed components. In the shared project, we can also remove the weather forecast class. And in the server project, we remove the weather forecast controller class. Now let's start the application to see how it looks. Great! We did some housekeeping and we improved the styling of our application. This video is the fifth part of the free Blazor crash course. You learned how Blazor applications load CSS files. You learned the difference between local and global CSS definitions. You learned how CSS isolation works and what naming convention enables it for Blazor components.
In the next video of this series, we will look at how to use static images in Blazor applications. We will use it to add a logo to our application. Tell me in the comments below if you like CSS isolation or prefer global styles when building web applications. Thanks for watching! Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the next part of this free Blazor crash course and see you in the next video.